Hey, it's Mike Kiani again here with another short video on troubleshooting using Wireshark. And what we're going to look at today is how to use Wireshark to troubleshoot uh, SMB SIFS file transfer. So the, the protocol that, that Microsoft uses uh, when you're mapping drives, when you're transferring files in between uh, systems and servers. This is the method in which those files are transferred. So what we're going to look at is uh, we've got a, a file transfer here where users were complaining that the, the file transfer was slow. And so what I've done is I've brought it into Wireshark. And one of the things we want to talk about is using profiles, uh, especially when you've got similar applications, similar protocols that you have to troubleshoot on a frequent basis like SMB SIFs uh, to come in and customize and you know basically create your own Wireshark version using these profiles. And one of the beautiful things about looking at SIFs in Wireshark is that Wireshark does a really good job with the, the uh, decode of the upper layer protocols here. So for example, if I look at this uh, uh, create and X request, uh, looking at the path FTP good.pcap, and I zoom in specifically into the SMB header here, you can see that there's a, a wealth of information um, about what's going on. So the, the file ID, um, uh, share attributes, um, the file attributes, a, a ton of different uh, really good information with inside this decode. And so what, what we're seeing here is I'm using this default profile right now. And what I've done is I've, I've created my own SIFS profile quite simply by coming in here uh, to this profile button and right clicking on it and saying new. So this will allow you to come in and create a new profile. And for this example, we can call this SIFS version two. What this will allow us to do is with any of the settings that I pick within, in, within Wireshark, any of the column layouts, coloring, uh, any of the rules that I set up will now be saved under this new profile so that when I need to switch to those specific different views it's just a matter of coming down here and changing the profiles and you can see I've got a number of these created uh, on my demo workstation here one for troubleshooting ARP, ARP type issues uh, HTTP security malware SSL and then uh, one that incorporates transom as well um, but in this case again we're going to kind of create our own. Um, so one of the things we may want to know is, for example, is we might, might want to know what the file that's being accessed is and, and to have the ability to look at that very quickly from just looking at the summary window up above. And in Wireshark, it's extremely easy to create these custom settings simply by coming down into finding a, a specific area, like in this case, a file name, and right clicking on this and saying apply this as a column. So now anywhere that that file name is present within the decode, we're gonna list it out here. So it allows us to very quickly come in, look at a trace file without digging into the header um, or even doing any type of searching uh, by just labeling that up top. Um, another attribute we may wanna use is in, in this specific uh, request query, um, information about the file. So what I'm looking for is when I come in here, one of the other things I may want to know is the end of file size. So in this uh, create index path request, the reply that comes back from that is going to actually tell me how big that file is. So now I can know how much data that's going to be transferred during this file transfer. So if I right click on this one, I'll come in here and say apply as a column as well. So now we can see how big this file is. So for example, here's a read request at a specific offset, 4096, reading 4096 bytes. So both of those attributes are something I might want to track as I follow the flow of this file transfer. So what I'll simply do is come in again and I'll pick this file read write length and right click on that and I'll apply that as a column as well. And the next thing I may want to do is come in and apply this file offset as a column. So now we can see sequentially 
as the reads and responses are coming back, where we are within that file as opposed to what the end of file is. So what's really cool about this is I can scroll down to the end and watch how that file gets read and as we see this file offset increment that's just reading further down that file until we get to the bottom where we actually send out a read request of 3,994 bytes instead of our 4,096 bytes because we have understood or, or SMB has understood how big that file actually is. So we can see with this last read response that that entire file was actually read and handed back to the requesting machine. So if things were to fail midstream we could very easily come in and see how much of that file was actually read as in, in appropriation to what that file size was. Now this file read write length is extremely useful for another uh, set of reasons and so one of the things that we can see here is that as we scroll down through this trace we are consistently reading 4096 bytes. Now again you might be wondering well okay we're, we're reading 4096 bytes what's the big deal with that? Well quite simply the smaller application block size that we're reading the more total round trips we're going to take to actually read in this 5 meg file. So we can see again this is a, a little over 5 megs um, and we're reading it 4096 bytes at a time. So if you could imagine if you will if uh, this would be something that would run fairly well in a low latency environment where the round trips are sub millisecond but take this read over a wide area network where maybe the uh, users are in Chicago and the file server is in Hawaii, for example, where that distance between those two locations is going to drive that latency value up so that every time we're reading 4K at a time, that's going to incur that round trip latency, which again is going to make the actual file read take much longer. Now, the other thing that we might want to look at here is by taking a look at uh, one of these specific packets and then going up and looking at the TCP window size. So that's another good thing to compare against uh, the application, how much the application is requesting versus what the uh, system buffer size looks like uh, from, a, from a receive perspective. So if I look down here, I can come in and, and look at the actual calculated window size here of, of 8K. And again, this is something I may want to graph. I'm going to apply this as a column. So now we can see what the different TCP receive windows are. And again, we didn't see the uh, three-way handshake in this trace, so we don't know if there's window scaling applied to this. Um, I actually captured this in, in my lab environment so I do know there is no window scaling turned on. One of the things that you want to compare is, is that receive window versus what's offered on the wire. And you can see that there's a, a, a huge factor between that 4096 and the 63,000 byte window size that's available. Again, the application is not filling that TCP window. So again, that's going to show us a little bit about why this was slow. But uh, using these different profiles is, is often very helpful. For those of you that may want to use this, I will make a download link available at the uh, bottom of the video here. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in.